And now to the growing fallout over Trump's latest comments on abortion. The former president said he was proud to have ended Roe v. Wade, but that abortion restrictions should be left up to the states. And that's getting him heat from both sides of the aisle. President Biden accusing Trump of lying about his stance. While Trump's own vice president, Mike Pence, and his longtime ally, Lindsey Graham, blasted him for opposing federal abortion restrictions. Let's bring in NBC News correspondent Dasha Burns, former Democratic Congresswoman from Maryland, Donna Edwards, former chief strategist for the Bush-Cheney 2004 campaign, Matthew Dowd, also with us. Thank you all. Dasha, fill us in on the blowback Trump is getting from both sides on this issue. Well, the blowback came pretty fast and furious from both sides of the aisle. Anna, look, he had been test driving this idea of like 15, 16 weeks at a, as, a, as a federal ban. So there was some speculation that he might come out and endorse something like that. Instead, he came out and said, you know what? I overturned Roe v. Wade. I did this for you guys. Now it's up to the states. Some will have more restrictions. Some will have less. Well, uh, the right of his party, the conservatives in his party that are anti-abortion, were not too happy about him allowing states like New York and California to pursue uh, their own agenda on this. And you heard from Lindsey Graham, you heard from Mike Pence, you heard from uh, the Susan B. Anthony organization that's really influential uh, in, in anti-abortion advocacy. The former president, though, knows that this is a tough issue for Republicans when it comes to elections. And even in that four minute video where he came out with his position, he said at one point, you know, follow your heart, but we must win. And on social media, he's clapping back at Lindsey Graham, saying the senator is doing a great disservice to the Republican Party, to our country. Writing later, many good Republicans lost elections because of this issue. And people like Lindsey Graham that are unrelenting are handing Democrats their dream of the House, Senate and perhaps even even the presidency. Now, President Biden and the Democrats are jumping on this right away, criticizing the former president, criticizing the fact that he's taking credit for the overturning of Roe versus Wade and all of the complications and the fallout afterwards. They came out with a pretty uh, deep, raw, personal ad highlighting the story of a woman who had a miscarriage at 18 weeks and was not able to get appropriate medical care because of the overturning of Roe versus Wade. I want you to take a listen to some of this. Her little footprints. It's okay. <laughs> this is something that Democrats at the Biden campaign will keep hammering on the campaign trail. We've seen time and again, Anna, that abortion is a losing issue for Republicans and it can drive Democratic voters and voters in the middle to the polls. Anna. Matthew, so Trump is blaming other Republicans on election losses, those Republicans who back strict abortion rules. What do you make of the, the party infighting? Well, it's funny that he's blaming other Republicans when he picked most of the losers. He endorsed most of the losers that ended up uh, losing in their key races. So if anybody's responsible for the losses, it's Donald Trump in this. To me, Donald Trump ended up on the at the actual worst possible political position that he could have been in. He didn't satisfy the right. And he still has he still is allowed to, to be able to motivate the left and the center in this country against his policies. And add to that, Donald Trump is going to be confronted by this every day when he says leave it up to the states. He's going to have to the answer have to answer the question, well, do you agree with what Florida's doing? Do you agree with what Texas is doing? Do you agree with what Alabama's doing? Do you agree with what Mississippi's doing in all of this? And so he, I think, ended up on the worst possible position in this. He's he's offended his his part of his base, and he's done nothing to appease swing voters. So to me, take the substance out of the question, which we could have a conversation about substantively where Donald Trump in this, which is awful. Politically, it's a loser in every way. And so Democrats are pouncing, Congresswoman. They've been quick to hammer home, as Dasha points out, how Trump has proudly taken credit for ending Roe v. Wade. Let's listen. I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. If he were to be put back in a position where he could sign off on a law, he would sign off on a national abortion ban. Let's be very clear about that. 
Congresswoman, what should Democrats do if they want to keep this issue top of mind for voters? Well, it's going to be top of mind for voters because on the one hand, Donald Trump is in a box of his own making. He takes credit for ending Roe v. Wade, but now he wants to dance all over um, uh, the middle on this issue. And so I think the Democrats are going to be smart up and down the ballot of uh, running on uh, restoring and protecting abortion rights. And they are where the majority of the American people are on this issue. And Donald Trump should not be able to escape responsibility for overturning Roe. And you're going to see it on ballots all across the, uh, the country where this is going to be a key, key issue front and center for voters. Democrats need to run with it, run on it. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.